I present to you the Theremin. Yeah. Woo! Let's get cooking. <laughs> well, I bet you didn't know that the Theremin was built by Leon Theremin in 1919, and he was inspired by current day radios having interference when the people brought their hand in to control the stations. So he wanted to actually enhance that, and he produced the theremin. Alright, right here we have one of our clocks, and this is going to be the one that we use for the capacitance. Okay. Now we're going to go and open it up, we've already taken the screws out. Yeah. Alright, on the inside here you can see all the inner workings. We have our antenna, and the other important feature we have is right here. We have four variable capacitors, two for AM and two for FM. We went ahead and jerry-rigged the antenna directly to the variable capacitor that has to do with the AM. Sound waves are created by compressing air in longitudinal waves, which are shown graphically as sine waves. Constructive interference happens when two crests of a wave line up. Destructive interference occurs when a crest and a trough line up, which cancels out noise. The three radio setup we have here, this one on the right acts as a broadcaster, this one acts as a receiver, and this one provides destructive interference. When this radio is turned on, you hear static, which means that they're not that there are no destructive interference is happening right now. So when it's turned on, and when it's tuned to the correct frequency, destructive interference happens when the crests and troughs line up and you don't hear the static anymore. Our first equation is capacitance equals epsilon naught times area over the distance. As distance decreases, capacitance increases. For example, the two plates are our antenna and my hand. When I bring my hand closer, the distance decreases and the capacitance increases. This difference in capacitance changes the rate at which the frequency is output. The relationship between capacitance and the frequency is that as capacitance increases, the charge and discharge rate increases, creating the frequency that is broadcasted to the receiver and radio. And what you've all been waiting for, the theremin in action. I start my hand here, and as I bring it closer to the antenna, the frequency of the note changes. And as I bring my hand back and forth, you can hear the corresponding frequency change with where my hand is. The closer it is to the antenna, the higher the note. So if we take a look at the equation that Kendall mentioned before, we notice that movement in the y direction has no effect on the sound that you hear. Only movement in the x direction changes the pitch, as you can clearly see. Tonight, if you're putting pressure, we present to you the Theremin Sextet. Freestyle. <laughs> <laughs> That's good because I can bleep that out. That'll be funny. And then we'll have. <laughs>